Nothing. Glad you tuned in tonight on AM 1380 WHRS. The state championship game in Class 4A is about to begin. Brian Lind is the other deep back to receive for St. X. The official gives the signal, and we're ready to play football. Hampton gets off the short kick and hits on the 13-yard line, picked up by Capizano on the 7, takes it to the far side of the field, and he's brought down right on the 20-yard line. Dwayne Morton was there, John Watts was there, and also Tom Shropshire. So St. X takes over just over the Tigers' 21-yard line. Just into the football game. Glad you tuned in. Lee Wagner, the quarterback for St. X, leads his team up to the line of scrimmage. They're running out of the split backfield with Hubs. It's a give to Carl Daly right up the middle. He gets it out to the 25, about the 26-yard line. Pick up a five yards on the play. We'll set up second and five for the Tigers. Nice job along the interior defensive front four as Sean Roach and John Hatton were on the bottom of the stack and they were joined by Tom Shropshire. Gain of uh, five yards on the first playoff left tackle by the St. X Tigers. Charlie Allen split wide to the near side. Now X running out of the eye formation. It's a give to Hubs right up the middle and not much there. He lunges forward and picks up about a yard. Tim Hampton in on the stop along with the other defensive end, number 32, Kenny Davis. Pick up of one. It's going to set up third down and four yards to go for X. Excellent teamwork by the defensive ends. Tim Hampton and Kenny Davis, as you call it, Graham. They were joined by the outside linebacker, Dwayne Morton. Short pick up to set up third and four. First big down of this football game. Miguel Montano split wide to the far side. Still running out of the split backfield. Wagner drops back to pass, and it's almost intercepted by Ryan Hudson. The pass was intended for Montano out on the 37-yard line, but he was way underthrown. So the Clark County defense has done the job here on this first possession by St. X. And now it, they'll be forced to punt Jerome Embry dropping back in safety for the Cardinals. Kind of a low snap, a very low punt. It bounces on the 47, and Clark County is just going to let it roll dead. Number 34, Steve Burmester, the punter for St. X. Not very happy with himself on that one. It was a very low kick, so the ball rolls dead on the GRC 43-yard line, and the Cardinals will take over there first and 10. And take over. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the first period. No score. Dale Goff leads his team up to the line of scrimmage. At center, Jerome Embry calling out the play. He has Hampton and Clay on the wings. Clay in motion to the near side. It's a give to Clay. Tries to go off right tackle. And I mean absolutely nothing there. But he's going to be lost for a little bit bringing down. But there was a loss that time. Big number 33, Brandon Myers. But he's not that big. 5'8", 190. But he played awfully big that time. Stopped him for a loss of about three yards on the play. Outstanding defensive pursuit by the St. X Tigers Graham. They play the 6-4, the wide tackle 6, and their job is to try to stop the wide stuff and stop the speed of Eric Clay, Tim Hampton, and Jerome Embry on the options they did at that time. Kirby Varney split wide to the near side, still in the double wing formation. Hampton in motion to the far side of the field. Embry rolls out on the keeper. Looks like all the way, looking for running room, and absolutely nothing. Took up maybe two yards, but does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. And now somebody's very slow getting up. I believe that is Jerome Embry. Nice tackle by the rolling linebacker, number 35, Adam Robinson, 5'8", 196 pounds, and he's very quick, Graham. Jerome simply had no room to run that time. Cardinals have snapped the ball twice. They're looking a third and 10 situation from their own 44-yard line. Excellent defensive pursuit by the entire St. X team. They fly to the football, Graham. This is an excellent defense. Only one team has scored over nine points on St. X all season long. That was Trinity. Embry hits the inside reverse to Tim Hampton. He gets it up the midfield, but that's not going to be enough for the first down. It was a pickup of about eight yards on the play. The initial handoff to Eric Clay, who in turn handed off to Hampton. That's going to make it fourth down and just a little over two yards to go now for the Cardinals. Excellent defensive play by the right quarterback, Keith Button, only 5'6", 168 pounds. He came up and made a nice, crisp tackle on Tim Hampton. Tim was trying to shed him, but he couldn't do it. John Watts in the snap. Eric Clay, the up back. 
Hampton standing back on his 38-yard line. It's a nice snap. He's got plenty of time. Gets off a very low kick. Fair catch signal for down on the 23-yard line. We bet, yeah, that's Frank Capisano. So St. X will take over there on the round 23. Eight minutes, 19 seconds remaining in the first period. No score. Both teams' defense is coming out playing very well tonight. St. X had to punt on their first possession. Clark County just had to punt on that, their first possession. X running out of the eye formation. It's a fake, and Wagner takes off to the near side, plays over there, but he finds some money and he gets up to the 30. He finally pushed out of bounds on about the 35-yard line. Nice bit of faking that time by Lou Wagner. He fakes the pitch to the tailback call Daly and then took off on the naked reverse to the near side of the field. Gets it right up to the St. X 45-yard line where it's a first down for the Tigers, their first of this football game. Nice play by St. X, and uh, Kenny Davis had got good penetration on that play, but the tight end, number 84, Paul Gordner at 5'11", 206 was there, and he cut Kenny down. Running out of the eye again. It's a pass to Montana. It's a little screen pass on the far side of the field. He's going to pick up about four or five yards on the play. As Wagner just stood straight up and fired it to Montana over on the 45-yard line, almost on the line of scrimmage, and then he picks up five yards to make it second down and five yards to go. Miguel Montana with 5'8", 143, perhaps is the fastest player on this St. X team, and they want to get the football to him a lot like UK tries to do with Kurt Johnson, Graham. Good coverage by the Cardinals, though. It's a good through Daly. Tries to go off left tackle, but not much there. One, maybe two yards. John Hatton in on the stop for Clark County, along with Dwayne Morton and Tom Schwapser. Been very impressed with the interior defensive line play of John Hatton and Sean Roach there as they're standing up the offensive line for St. X and letting the linebackers come in and make the hit. That was a short game to set up a third and three, Graham. Pick up a two yards on the play. The ball is on the GRC 48-yard line where it is. Third down and three yards to go. X now running out of the split backfield. Wagner, it's a give to Jerry Hobbs right up the middle, and I don't think he's going to have enough for a first down. Looks like he picks up about one yard on the play. He tried to go off right tackle. John Hatton again in on the stop for Clark County, along with Shropshire and Davis. Gain of one yard on the play. It's going to set up fourth down and two yards to go, so... This is going to be an interesting call for St. X coach Mike Glazer. It looks like the Tigers are going to go for it. I look for St. X to change the snap count, Graham, and try to throw the Cardinals offside. And they're running out of the I formation. Now they shift into the split backfield with twin sets to the far side. And now Wagner signals for timeout. He doesn't like what he sees. So with timeout on the field, we'll take one, too. You're listening to GRC Cardinal football on AM 1380. Lee Wagner, the quarterback, did not like what he saw and called timeout. And now they're going to drop back into punt formation. But this would be a golden opportunity to fake one. Oh, it looks like the Chain X did exactly what they wanted to, Angie. They, I believe they drew Clark County offside. I believe that's going to be dead ball encroachment against the Cardinals, Graham, on the far side. I believe it was Tim Hampton. Tim Hampton has blocked uh, four punts this year, and he wanted to come very hard, but he got a quick start that time, and it cost him. Is that's going to give St. X a uh, five-yard penalty and obviously a first down? St. X called a timeout. Apparently, Mike Glazer did uh, exactly what he wanted to do in a situation where they've got confidence in their defense. They probably didn't really want to punt the football, and they were successful as they drew Tim Hampton into the neutral zone, picked up five yards and a big first down as they drive now into Cardinal territory, first and 10 from the Clark County 42-yard line. Twin sets to the near side of the field, split backfield. It's a pitch back to Daly, he tries to go to the far side, and nothing there at all as he's driven out of bounds by a whole host of white shirts. No gain on the play, sets up second down and 10 yards to go. Drayley tried to go wide, there was absolutely nothing there. Graham, Tim Hampton, Ryan Hudson, Dwayne Morton, Kenny Davis were all there to drive him out of bounds. They credit him with no gain to set up a second and 10 situation. Cardinals fired up and they answered the situation with excellent defensive pursuit, flying to the football right in front of head coach Don Banco and his assistant Marty Joyce on the Cardinals sideline. Second and 10 from the Cardinal 42. Running out of the eye now. Wagner drops back to pass, looking for Montano. And here comes Kirby Barney. He's scrambling. Here comes John Hatton. Now Wagner throws it long downfield, and it's incomplete. 
Nice throw. It was intended for Cincy Sorrello, 5'7", 155 pounds in a junior. Number 30, he was open down on the 30-yard line, but Wagner overthrew him. But I tell you, he can scramble. He can scramble. He's very quick, but he used up a lot of energy on that thing as John Hatton, Kirby Varney, and Tim Hampton were back there, and he was scrambling for his life. His receiver was wide open, Graham, but he had to throw the ball to the far side of the field and threw it about 35 yards in the air. It was a very, very close situation because Ryan Hudson had lost a couple of steps as he was coming up to run protect. Big break for the Cardinals. Twin sets to the near side. I formation again. Wagner drops straight back to pass. Throws it long downfield, and it's incomplete. That was intended for, I believe that's number 36, Brent Foreman, but he was overthrown. Eric Clay, Dwayne Morton, and Ryan Hudson were deep in coverage along with Stefan Britton. So that's going to set up fourth down and long right at 10 yards for St. X, and they will have to punt the football this time. The ball is on the Clark County 42-yard line. St. X is throwing the football a little more than we thought they would, Graham, and they've had some people open as it looks like the Cardinals are using his own defense tonight versus the man-to-man -man coverage that we've seen them use most of this season. Punt's going to be down inside the GRC 20-yard line, about the 16-yard line. Steve Burmeister doing a nice job punting. Not trying to get off a long punt that time, but 10 Clark County back, which they did. This St. X defense is good. They're allowing only 5.6 points a game. They're not an explosive team on offense, but they do have a su superb defense led by the All-State inside linebacker Mike Schellenberger. Clark County now comes up to the line of scrimmage. 5-14 remaining in the first period. The ball is on the 17-yard line. To give up the middle to Kenny Davis, he brings it out over the 20-yard line to about the 22, gain of five yards on the play, sets up second down and five for Clark County. Quick hitter right up the middle, following the blocking of Dale Goff, James Stoltz, and Tom Shropshire. Uh, it's a nice three-yard gain. Kenny Davis running very hard. His first carry in the stop once again made by an outstanding linebacker. He's made a number of tackles. Adam Robinson, 5'8", 196 pounds. He's a player. He'll hit you, Graham. Jerome Embry, hands under center, calling out the play. Hampton in motion to the far side. It's a give to Davis again up the middle, and he gets it out over the 25-yard line to about... So we have remaining in the first period with our score, Clark County 6, St. X nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment right here on AM 1380 WHRS. Tim Hampton kick taken on the 18-yard line. Brought out to the St. X 33-yard line by number 41, Steve Fernandez, six feet. Clark County has just scored on a 74-yard run off left tackle by Tim Hampton behind the blocking of Tom Shropshire, Kevin Warner, and Dale Goff to put Clark County on top in this football game, six to nothing. The extra point was no good. St. X now sends two wide receivers to the near side. One to the far side, lined up in the straight I formation. It's a give to the up back. No, it's kept by Lee Wagner. Right up the middle, he gets it up to the St. X. 39-yard line. 
line, pickup of three yards on the play will set up second down and seven. Nice defensive play that time by number 66, James Stoltz. Tim Hampton, who just went 76 yards, also got a piece of it, Graham. A quick drive recap. The Cardinals took over on their own 17-yard line. They tried to establish the fullback and, and soften up the St. X interior defenses. They gave it to Kenny Davis on two successive carries to set up a third and one. And then Tim Hampton off left tackle with three minutes and 51 seconds left in the first quarter. He goes 76 yards in Louisville, going left to right, headed towards Winchester. Tim Hampton's kick was blocked. The score right now with 3.09 left. Clark County 6, St. X 0. We're ready to go now. The official that signaled for time. St. X has twin sets to the far side now. Still in the eye. Wagner drops straight back to pass. Gets great protection. Throws it long downfield to Montano. And it's called down on the Clark County 46-yard line. Miguel Montano, the favorite target of Lee Wagner. That's his catch this season. Coming into the game, he had 516 yards in receiving on 39 receptions. That's an average of 13.2 yards per catch and two touchdowns. And that time, Lee Wagner drilled it right in there to him. X up to the line of scrimmage. First down on the GRC, 46. Split backfield. It's a pitch back to Carl Daly. He tries to take it wide to the near side and find some running room. This is right to the, just inside the 40-yard line where he finally drug out of bounds by Eric Clay. But Carl Daly is the Tigers' leading rusher this season with 698 yards on 159 carries. That's an average of 4.4 yards per carry. He scored 11 touchdowns for the Tigers. He picked up more than I thought he did that time, a gain of about eight yards on the play. Make it nine, second down and one. The ball is on the GRC 37-yard line. X running out of the Wagner. It sprints out to the far side, tucks it under, heads up field, gets it over the 35-yard line, down to about the 32, and that's going to be enough for a Tiger first down. Nice run. Wagner following the blocking of his right tackle, number 77, Robbie Ringenberg at 5'11", 223 pounds. Graham, it appears obvious to me that St. X has done a nice job of scouting the Cardinals uh, as they exchange film. As they're doing a good job of having their tight ends. They go with two tight ends, and they're putting their hats on Tim Hampton and Kenny Davis on the wide stuff, and they're making the cornerbacks like Clay and Bruton and Hudson come up and make the stop. Prince out to the near side on the option. He was caught from behind, but not brought down, and finally Eric Clay gets in here to drop him on the 30-yard line. Dwayne Morton had a piece of his jersey, but couldn't bring him down, but he slowed him up a little bit, and then James Stoltz and Tom Shropshire came in to polish him off right on the 30, gain of only one yard on the play. We'll set up second down and nine now for the Tigers. Excellent penetration by Dwayne Morton. He actually had the uh, hold of Lee Wagner about seven yards deep in the backfield, but Wagner put a spin, on, spin move on him and got back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he picked up about one gram to set up a second and nine. Flag on the play. We have a flag on the play. That might be a delay of gain, Graham. Yeah, that was a dead ball foul before the snap. Official coming over to give the signal. Offside against St. X. So that's going to set the Tigers back five yards to the Clark County 35. That will make it second down and 14 yards to go. Graham, we didn't get a lineup as we told the audience uh, for St. X, and they do have good size. Uh, looking down on the field, their offensive front looks to be pretty good size. But Sean Roach, and John Hatton to control the middle, and St. X is either throwing the football or going wide on every snap. So Tim Hampton, Kenny Davis, Dwayne Morton, and John Watson, Eric Clay, they've got to have a good game on the flanks. Wagner again, drops straight back to pass, and it's complete again over the middle to Montano. Down on the 25-yard line, pick up 10 yards on the play. It's going to set up third down and about four for X. But I tell you, I'm impressed with Miguel Montano, and Lee Wagner is threading the needle. Wagner comes into the game with... 585, no, excuse me, 883 yards passing this season. He's 60 out of 126, just slightly under 50 percent. He's thrown five touchdowns. He averages 14.7 yards per completion. Right now calling the play. They're in the split backfield. Twin sets to the far side of the field. It's a give to Daly off left tackle. He's got enough for a first down. Finally brought down on the 16-yard line, Eric Clay and John Watts, I believe, in on the stop for Clark County. 
one. But that's going to be enough for another X first down. Graham, they ran right at John Hatton that time, but they double teamed him. Number 72, Jason Elder at six foot 263, and Rick North, number 70, at 6'3", 249. That's about 600 pounds going right at Big John, and they took him out of the play that time, Graham, and it was a nice run by Draley. Long count. Wagner, it's a give to Hubs. He tries to go off left tackle, finds a little daylight, gets it down inside the GRC 10-yard line to about the nine. Jerry Hubs on the carry. Hubs comes into the game, the third leading ball carrier for X with 496 yards on 97 carries. That's an average of 5.1 yards per carry, and he scored seven touchdowns this season. Nice offensive scheme by St. Xavier, at least in this first quarter, Graham. No question in my mind, St. X is the best passing football team we've uh, faced. Wes Johnson uh, to Johnny Hall over in Nicholasville was impressive, but Wagner to Montana is something else. X running out of the wishbone. They certainly have a lot of formations, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter. And the first quarter comes to an end with our score, Clark County 6, St. X nothing. But the Tigers have the ball on the GRC, 10-yard line. We're at second and four. They've had two nice pass plays from uh, Lee Wagner to Miguel Montano to keep this drive alive. And if they're doing exactly what they want to do, they're moving the football and keeping it out of the hands of the Cardinal offense. They're lined up in the wishbone formation. Give to a new back in the game and a big back, number 59. That's Mike Schellenberger. Normally plays inside linebacker for the Tigers. He's six feet, 210 pounds, but he was lined up in the tail there on the wishbone formation, and he takes it down to, looks like about the eight yard line, where it's gonna be third down and a long one yard to go for the Tigers. Stop made by Kirby Varney, number 82, six foot 180, who had the great football game last Friday at uh, Winchester's Cardinal Stadium against Trinity. Here's a big down, third and four. Wagner, it's, no, it's a keeper. And he's got enough for the first down, I believe. Wayne Morton was in on the stop that time for Clark County. He only had to get it to the six. It looks like he takes it down to the five. So that's going to set up first and goal for St. X. Well, the back end of the football is right on the five-yard line. Wagner is an excellent, excellent running quarterback. 5'8", 163 pounds, and as you called it, Dwayne Morton hit him about two yards deep in the backfield, but he used that spin move once again and uh, picked up enough yards for the first down. The ball is on the five-yard line, first and goal. The Cardinal defense needs to toughen up right now. X running out of the split backfield with Hubs and Daly. Long count, it's a give to Daly. Comes to the near side and he just waltzes in. Nobody touched Carl Daly at all that time as he sprinted into the near side of the field into the end zone. So with 10 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the second quarter, that makes our score Clark County six, St. X six. And now X lines up to attempt the point after. The kicker is Mike Conklin. here for St. X, as you might expect. Montano in to do the holding, Conklin in the, to do the kicking. He's a soccer-style kicker. Ball is down, the kick is up, and it's good. So we have 10 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the second quarter with the score of St. X 7, Clark County 6. We'll be back with the kickoff. Clark County trails 7 to 6 with Hampton and Eric Clay back to receive the kickoff. Daly gets off a low kick. It's going to be taken by Hampton on the eight-yard line. He brings it straight up the middle of the field, gets up to the 25, and he's finally snowed under on about the 27-yard line where Clark County will take over first and 10. 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the second period. St. X 7, Clark County 6. The Cardinals have the football now on the St. X. We'll call it now it's the 28-yard line. Clark County was stomped on their first possession, but on their second possession on the third and one or two yard situation, Tim Hampton broke off left tackle for 74 yards, but X came back and marched it right down the field. Hampton in motion to the near side to give up the middle to Kenny Davis. Like, no, it's a give to Clay. That was the Betsy Clay. It was a fake to Davis, and then a give on the misdirection to Eric Clay. There is a flag down, however. Graham, a quick look at the first quarter statistics. Clark County led at the end of the first quarter, six to nothing. St. Xavier, uh, five first downs. Uh, George Rogers Clark, one. St. Xavier rushed the ball for a total of 64 yards on 12 carries. Clark County picked up 91 on six carries. Of course, Tim Hampton went 76 yards for the touchdown. 
St. X uh, attempted five passes and completed three. Clark County has yet to throw the football. Total offense of the first quarter, St. Xavier 94 yards. Clark County a total of 91 yards. St. X punted twice for an average of 27 yards per punt. And Tim Hampton punted once for 25 yards. There were no turnovers. Penalties were even, one each at uh, five yards. St. X had the football for eight minutes. Clark County just a little less than three. Penalty was on Clark County, a legal procedure, so now it's first and 15, back on the 23. It's an inside reverse, but a fumble. Eric Clay picks it up, and now he breaks loose, but he's only going to pick up about two yards. It was the inside reverse, the initial handoff to Tim Hampton, who gave the ball to Eric Clay, but he bobbled it on the exchange. Fortunately, grabbed a hold of the football and tried to take it to the far side of the field, but only picked up about two yards right to the 25-yard line, and that's going to make it second down and 13 to go. It's a play by Eric Clay on the lucky bounce off this artificial service surface, and it was Mike Schellenberg of the fine linebacker that Bill Curry's here looking at, six foot two ten, that drove Eric out of bounds on the Clark County 27-yard line, second and 13. Clark County moving from our left to right to left. Embry rolls out to pass, gets decent protection. Now it's breaking down. Throws it long downfield, and it's intercepted on the 29-yard line. 29, Frank Capizano, who had three interceptions, I believe, last week for St. X. Picked it off on the 40, brings it down to the Clark County. Looks like the 28-yard line, and St. X takes over an outstanding field position. The pass was intended for Kirby Barney, who had Campisano beat grab, and Campisano at 5'8", 170, a lot like Lee Wagner and Miguel Montano. They're small, but they're very quick, and he did a nice job to come in there and pick that pass off. Well, St. X takes over on the GRC 28-yard line. Wagner sprints out to the far side. He's going to run with the football. Eric Clay's over there and runs him out of bounds. Gain of maybe one yard on the play. He was following the blocking that time of his up back, Carl Daly. Frank Capizano is an outstanding athlete. He and Jerome Embry, I understand, were both awarded with $1,000 scholarships. Player from each team receiving one here from the Kentucky High School Athletic Association, but he is a tremendous defensive back. He read that pass all the way. Gain of one on the play, second down and nine yards to go. The ball on the GRC 27 yard line. Wagner again drops straight back to pass, and it's complete on the 18 yard line. Ready six, Greg. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Bay line, I believe, but it's enough for a well, it's going to be very close. Looks like it's going to be about a foot short of a first down. Nice pass to the split end, Greg Ball line. He's 6'2", 190. That's a tall task for Ryan Hudson. Ryan's 5'8", 155 pounds. He did a nice job to come up and make the tackle, but not before a completion. Good for nine yards to set up third and one. Lee Wagner can throw the football, Graham. He's impressive. He certainly is. Twin sets to the far side of the field. Split backfield. It's a quarterback keeper all the way, and Wagner's got enough. In fact, he takes it all the way down to the GRC 10-yard line. He only needed to get to about the 17. St. X moving the football. They're just outside the 10. They can possibly pick up a first down without getting a touchdown. Eight minutes, 13 seconds left in the second quarter. Our score is St. X 7, Clark County 6, but the Tigers have the ball just outside the GRC 10, and they're driving. Twin sets to the far side with Bayline and Miguel Montano. Split backfield. Wagner to give to Jerry Hubbs. He goes off left tackle and gets it down to about the two or three yard line. Big hole that time for Jerry Hubbs. It was a big hole, Graham, and uh, he really tripped over his own man. He was following the blocking of Bert Eisen back 5'10, 200 pounds, the right tackle, and uh, they bumped headed towards the end zone. Hubbs got a little excited and simply fell down. Not a Cardinal laid a hand on him. The Cardinal defense needs a tremendous goal line stand right now as the ball's a little over two yards shy of the Cardinal end zone. Second down, two yards to go. Again, running out of the split backfield. Wagner on the keeper, goes off left tackle, and he gets in, touchdown. Lee Wagner from two yards out off left tackle. It was seven minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter. That makes the score St. X 13, Clark County six. Lee Wagner, very impressive, both running and throwing the football for the St. X Tigers. Mike Conklin in to attempt the point after now for X. Miguel Montana, the holder. 
touchdown set up by the Frank Capizano interception. Ball is down, the kick is up, and it's good. Seven minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the second period in our scores. St. X 14, Clark County 6. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Number 25, Tigers have just scored to take a 15 to 6 lead. Daly gets off a high but short kick. It's going to be taken by Hampton on the 13-yard line. Takes it up the center of the field. Gets it up over the 30 to the 35. Still on his feet. Finally knocked down on the 43-yard line. But a nice return by Tim Hampton to give Clark County the ball in good field position. That was a nice run by Tim. He broke several tackles and almost broke that thing, Graham. That's going to fire this Cardinal offense up, I believe, and it has to. That's the leadership that Tim Hampton, Eric Clay, and Jerome Embry bring to this ball club. Plenty of time, seven minutes and five seconds left till half. They need to get in the end zone. They're going to get the football to start the third quarter, so the Cardinals are in good shape, but they need to move the football right now. Barney split wide to the near side to give to Hampton. He tries to go off left tackle, and not much there. He might have gotten one yard at best following the blocking of Tom Schrocher and Kevin Warner. St. X very quick on defense. It is a give gain of one yard. That sets up second down, second down and nine yards to go. The ball is just short of the GRC 45-yard line. St. X defense very impressive as we expected, Graham, and they're getting good penetration. They're getting uh, to the Cardinal running backs one and two yard, one and two yards deep in the backfield, and there really hadn't been much room to run. Hampton on the wing. It's a fake to Eric Clay. Embry drops back to pass. Now he's being flushed out of the pocket. Throws it long downfield. Not a good pass. It might be intercepted. It's incomplete. Pass was intended for Tim Hampton. Way down on the St. X 30-yard line. Number 18, Sam Moore, got in there to break up the pass, and that's going to set up third down and nine now for GRC. Tim Hampton uh, did a nice job of breaking that thing up, Graham. It looked like it was going to be picked off. There were two St. X Tigers back there, and Jerome threw a long pass. It was very high, and uh, it didn't cover the distances. Tim Hampton had those uh, Tigers beat, but Jerome couldn't get him the football because that ball traveled 45 or 50 yards in the air. Tim Hampton, a nice job of breaking it up and preventing the interception. Third and nine, a big down for the Cardinals. Bruton in the game. It's the inside reverse, and there is a fumble. Stephon Bruton might have gone in there and fallen on that football. I believe he did. Bruton had checked in that time for Tim Hampton. It was the inside reverse, the first hand off to Bruton, and he fumbled it on the exchange with Eric Clay, but fortunately fell on it. But Clark County's going to be forced to punt the football, and that's the second time, Angie, that Clark County has run the inside reverse, and that's unusual, 15 games into the season, but there's been a, a bobble on the exchange twice now. Yes, Graham, they appear to be somewhat nervous. This is a big football game, artificial surface. I don't believe it's having anything to do with it, but there's a huge crowd here pulling for St. X, and it's firing the St. X defense up, especially with a 14 to six lead. Nice snap. Hampton gets off a high, but not real long punt. It's going to be taken by Montana on the 26, and he's met right there by Stephon Bruton. Went on about the 27 or 8 yard line. Nice high kick by Tim Hampton and good punt coverage for the Cardinals. St. X takes over now on the GRC 28. There's five minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the first half with our scores. St. X 28, Clark County, or excuse me, St. X 14, Clark County 6. St. Xavier takes over first and 10 at their own. Uh, Brandon Hominick checking in to the secondary for Clark County. Otherwise, still pretty much. I believe Daniel Israel's in there at one of the ends. It's a give to Daly. Goes off left tackle and finds a hole. Gets it all the way out to the St. X 40 yard line. And that's going to be enough for a Tiger first down. Simple playoff left tackle, Carl Draley, 5'9", 175 pounds. Graham, he's not real big, but he broke several tackles that time as Dwayne Morton, Stephon Bruton, Eric Clay had shots at him, and it was Brandon Hermanet and Sean Roach that combined to make the stop. Tim Hampton back in at one of the defensive ends in place of Israel. Hermanet's in in place of Kirby Barney. Give to Jerry Hubbs right up the middle, gets it to the 43-yard line, pickup of about four yards on the play where it will set up second down and six yards to go for the Tigers. Nice tackle that time by Sean Roach and Big John Hatton right in the middle of the defensive line for the Cardinals. Second and six with four minutes and 38 seconds, the clock ticking, left till intermission. All in sets to the near side of the field. Wagner drops back to pass, got nice protection, and it's, it's incomplete. Stephon Bruton almost had a shot at that. It was intended for Carl Daly, but a little bit underthrown. Daly was laying on the ground. 
from the Clark County 35 yard line. Incomplete, that's gonna make it third down and six yards to go now. Big down for the Clark County defense. They need to hold right here. Nice pass route out of the backfield by Adraley. The receivers for St. X Grand, they look like uh, triplets. They're all about 5'9", go about 160 to 175 pounds. They run nice pass routes and they can get open, Graham. They're tough to cover. High formation, Wagner again drops straight back to pass. There's the flag down. It's caught right at midfield. That would be enough for a first down. That's number 86 again, Greg Bowline, 6'2", 190 pounds, and a senior flag was dropped in the backfield. It's going to be illegal procedure against St. X, however, so that's going to wipe out a first down by the Tigers on a nice pass play from Lee Wagner to Bowline. That will set up a third down and about 11 yard to go situation now for X. Bowline line an outstanding tight end, good size, 6'2", 190. Ryan Hudson that time did not appear to be totally aware of a down and distance situation as bowline line simply went about one or two yards past the necessary uh, yardage uh, for the first down and uh, Ryan gave him a cushion and allowed him now to receive the football but uh, big Xavier break for the Cardinals, illegal procedure against St. X, set up a third 11. Lee Wagner obviously going to go up in the air, I believe, this time, Graham. Deep drop by the Cardinals secondary. Eric Clay, Stephon Bruton, and Ryan Hudson were there. Somebody needs to get to Lee Wagner. Now, he has had quite a bit of time to throw the football. Montano and Bowline split wide to the far side. Split backfield. X moving from our left to right. Wagner drops back to pass. Now he's being flushed out of the pocket. It's a pass complete to the near side of the field. And he may go. That's number 10, Brian Lynn. Bruton finally slows him up on the 30-yard line, and he's dropped on the 26th. A screen pass to the near side of the field to Brian Lynn. 5'9", 155 pounds. He caught it on about the 40-yard line and then just streaked right up the near side of the field. There's another fly on the play. It's clipping against St. X. And it's dropped on the X 45-yard line, so that may well wipe out that play. Another good-looking pass play by St. X, who has a nice offensive scheme. It was a throwback, the screen to another 5'9 receiver, Brian Lynn, who did a nice job running the football. But the Cardinals, I thought, had it defensed well. Ryan, and Ryan simply uh, lost his footing that time. But nonetheless, a big break for the Cardinals on the clipping call. Well, that may be one reason why he was so wide open. That sets it all the way back now to the St. X 30-yard line, where it's third down and 19 yards to go. I did not really believe coming into this football game that St. X's offense was that strong, but they have one of the best offensive schemes I've ever seen. Twin sets to the near side. Wagner again drops straight back. Here comes Tim Hampton, and he throws into the turf way back on the 10-yard line. Loss of 20 yards on the play. Good to see Tim Hampton out there rushing the quarterback, doing perhaps what he does best. That's leadership, Graham, Kenny Davis, and Tim Hampton, an excellent pair of defensive ends. They've been taken out of this football game for most of the first half by the good blocking of the tight ends for the St. Xavier Tigers, but that time Tim Hampton broke free, and Lee Wagner paid a huge loss. Fourth and 34, and the Cardinals are coming. They want to block it, Graham, with 2.42 left until intermission. Here they come. Embry trying to block it, but Burmester gets off a decent punt. It's going to be taken by Embry on the 47-yard line. He tries to take it to the far side of the field, still on his feet, but now he's brought down on about the 40 or 41-yard line. So St. X had picked up the first down twice. Once on a pass play to the midfield, another on a screen play, which took it all the way down to the GRC 30-yard line. But penalties wiped out both plays. Two yards, illegal procedure. The second one was a clip. Wagner dropped back to pass and was thrown for about a 20-yard loss. So now Clark County takes over in outstanding field position. And St. X calls for a timeout. So with a timeout on the field, we'll take one, too. You're listening to GRC Cardinal football on eight. Two minutes, 28 seconds left, Graham. The Cardinals have all three of their timeouts. The ball's on the St. X 40-yard line. The Cardinal offense needs to respond right now and take advantage of this field position and get six on the board before they go in the locker room. Double wing formation. Embry, hands under center, calling out the play. Sends Hampton in motion to the near side. It's a keeper by Embry. 
Now he takes off running. He gets it down to the 35-yard line. To the 30. It's enough for a first down. Finally brought down on about the St. X 27-yard line. It was a fake to Tim Hampton. Then a nice run by the quarterback, Jerome Embry, and he picks up enough for a Clark County first down. We're going to spot it on the X 27-and-a-half-yard line. Nobody was open, open grand. St. X has a nice defensive secondary. They picked off 12 passes coming in this football game, but Jerome Embry got that yardage on his own, and once again, it was Adam Robinson, the roving linebacker, 5'8", 196, that dropped Jerome, but not before he picked up the first down. Hampton in motion to the near side once again. Embry, it's an unusual counter type play to Eric Clay, and he's going to be stopped for nothing at all. A type of a draw or counter play to Eric Clay trying to take it off left tackle, but St. X held their position well and stopped him for no gain. And that's going to set up second down and 10 yards to go now for the Cardinals. One minute, 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Cardinals trailed by eight here in the first half against St. X. Ball is on the Sun X 27 yard line. It's the inside, no. Eric Clay's got the football and a little confusion that time. It was a give to Clay. He faked the inside reverse, tried to take it wide, but he was gonna, he's gonna be thrown for a loss of about a yard and a half and that sets up third down and 12 now for Clark County. Loss of two yards. Cardinals have the ball, second down and 12. The Tigers, 29 yard line, third down and 12. Clark County shifts, they have twin sets to the near side. Jerome Embry, there's a penalty on the play, it's a screen to Eric Clay, he takes it down to the 20, still on his feet, pushed out of bounds on about the 11, but there's a flag on the play, and I have a feeling he definitely may come back. And that would be a tough break for Clark County because Eric Clay had enough for a first down. Graham, I see Kenny Davis motioning to the Cardinal sideline that he thought it was against St. X, but it looks like a legal procedure against the Cardinals. That's a tough break for the Cardinals. But third and 17, 109 left until intermission, Graham. This is the biggest down for Clark County in this football game. This was a golden opportunity as they took over on the St. X 40. Embry drops straight back to pass. He's getting decent protection. Now he's being flushed out of the pocket. He's still on his feet, though. He's going to run with it. He's probably not going to make it, but I'll tell you, it's not for a lack of effort. He's brought down on about the 26-yard line. Pick up uh, seven yards on the play. That's going to make it fourth down, and looks like about nine yards to go, maybe eight, closer to eight. Now we're ready to go. Dale Goff over the ball at center for Clark County. Double wing formation. Hampton in motion to the near side. Embry rolls out to the near side, looking for somebody to throw to. And it's incomplete as he was dragged down from behind. Number 46, David Dabney, in to drag the run down. So St. X will take over now with 47 seconds remaining in the first half on the GRC 25-yard line. Jerome doing a very nice job of scrambling Graham, but there's just simply nobody to throw the football to. St. X's secondary has got the receivers, Watts and Barney and Hampton, who floods from the backfield, and even that time Eric Clay went out. So the Cardinals had four receivers out there, and Jerome looking uh, for everyone, scrambling in desperation, simply could not find anyone to throw the football to. And, of course, the whole time the linebackers and the defensive tackles are coming after Jerome. Lee Wagner on a keeper all the way, gets it out to the St. X about the 28-yard line. And the stop was by number 65. Gain of three yards on the play will set up second down and seven. So it looks like St. X may be content to go into the locker room up 14 to six. Clark County had a golden opportunity as they had field position on the St. X 40-yard line and were, but were unable to move the football. Lee Wagner just goes back and falls down, so they're definitely content to run out the clock. In fact, that may be the last play of the first half. Just four seconds remaining. Big cheer goes up from the St. X fans. That is the end of the first half with our score, St. X 14, Clark County 6. Perhaps it's taken the Cardinals a while to get adjusted to this playing surface. I'm sure they'll make that adjustment in the second half, and I look for them to come out and play well, Graham. Carl Daly set to kick off now for St. X. 
ball taken by Eric Clay on the nine-yard line, brings it straight up the middle of the field, gets it up over the 20, the 25-yard line, and brought down on the GRC 27. The Cardinals will take over from there, first and 10 yards to go. Just into the second half, glad you tuned in tonight on AM 1380 WHRS. Graham Johns along with Angelo Gazzaroli, our score, San X 14, Clark County 6. The Cardinals have the football to start this second half. It is right at their own 27-yard line. Dale Goff up over the ball at center now for GRC. The Cardinals are moving from our right to left here in the third period. Kirby Barney split wide to the near side. Clay in motion to the far side. It's a give to Clay. He tries to go off right tackle and he's good down from behind. Number 36, Dover Dabney, and he's a good one. 5'10", 243 pounds. Eric Clay tried to go off right tackle, but nothing there. Gain of about one yard, makes it second down and nine yards to go. Behind the blocking of Trent Travis, it looked for a moment that Eric Clay had some running room, but David Dabney caught Eric by the shoestring. Dabney, the defensive tackle, 5'10", 243 pounds. A junior, a nice tackle on Eric Clay on the first play of the second half. Inbreds again to Hampton. He goes off left tackle and nothing there at all. Now he shifts direction. Straight on his feet. What an effort by Tim Hampton. He's only going to pick up about three yards, but he earned every single one of them as he tried to go off left tackle. There was absolutely nothing there. He reversed directions, was hit right on the line of scrimmage, and he's actually going to pick up about four yards on that play, five yards maybe. Excellent effort by Hampton. He got it all on his own. He was met in the backfield by Mike Schnellenberger, but he wouldn't go down, Graham. Tim Hampton trying to give his ball club leadership. Third and third, the ball on the 33-yard line. It's the inside of the burst. The clear, he breaks it outside. He's got enough for a first down. Yard line. The inside reverse, the first handoff to Tim Hampton, who gave it to Eric Clay. He was bottled up and then broken wide to the far side of the field and picks up enough for a Clark County first down. And the Cardinals need to get it into the end zone and put some life back into this offense, Angie. Eric Clay, a nice 10 yard gain, and he almost broke it. Graham Adam Robinson, who had nine tackles in the first half, stopped Eric Clay as he almost broke it right in front of the Cardinals sidelines. Play on the wing. It's a give to Hampton right up the middle. Gets it up over the 35 yard line to about the 46. Gain of two on the play. We'll set up second down and eight yards to go. Marty Joyce, no question about it, had words with the offensive line. Trent Travis, James Stoltz, Dale Goff, Tom Schrops, or Kevin Warner. They look like they have new life, Graham. There was a gain of four right up the gut behind the block of Dale Goff and Tom Schrops. James Stoltz was also there. They're firing off the ball. The Cardinals want to take it to the end zone, Graham. They're impressive coming out of the locker room. Hampton in motion to the near side. It's a give to. No, it's a shot up past the corner. He's in midfield. And he's finally brought down in St. X territory on the 43 yard line. The little shovel of the Utah pass that we've seen work so successfully throughout these playoffs. It's good for another first down for Clark County. Excellent play by the Cardinals. They're gathering momentum. It was the free safety. Miguel Montano at 5'8", 143. Who teamed up with Lee Wagner to make the stop. Eric Clay running very hard. Looks like we have a timeout on the field. Graham, St. X, a little shell shock as the Cardinals come out firing up. Look at the Cardinal crowd. Graham, they're on their feet. The Cardinals are moving to football. Let's take a timeout with 9 minutes and 35 seconds left. Send it back to David Monarch. Embry calling out the play. Clay in motion to the far side. It's a give up the middle to Kenny Davis. Finds him running around. Gets it down inside the 35 yard line. Close to a Clark County first down. The offensive line starting to open up some holes for the running backs of the Cardinals. No question about it. Graham Kenny Davis carried the ball two times in the first half for nine yards. He picked up nine that time. 6'3, 185, a junior. They're trying to establish Kenny Davis to maintain integrity in the interior of the defensive line of St. X. So they're not going to attack on the flanks. Excellent run by the ball. Kenny Davis. Hampton in motion. He goes right up the middle. I believe that's Kenny Davis once again. Not much on the play, but he doesn't need much for a first down. I think he's got it. His momentum may have taken him down to about the St. X 32-yard line. We'll see where they spot the football. Yeah, the nose of the football just shy of the 31, so that is the first down for Clark County. Adrenaline up, obviously flowing for the offensive line. Graham, let's mention them again. Trent Travis, James Stoltz, Dale Goff, Tom Shropshire, Kevin Warner, firing off the football, first and 10. From the 31-yard line of St. Xavier, Jerome Embry at the controls offensively. Hampton split wide right to the far side. And it's a give up the middle that time. I got faked out just a little bit. It was to Kenny Davis right up the middle. He gets it inside the 25-yard line of St. X. 
We'll call it the 24 pickup of seven yards on the play. We'll set up second down and three yards to go. Nice bit of ball faking that time by Jerome Embry. As it looked like he had it on the keeper, but he left it off with Kenny Davis all the way. Second and three, ball on the 24. Embry sends play in motion to the far side. It's a give the throw off right tackle, and somebody drug him down from behind again, and again, that's David Dabney. He certainly has quick hands, as that's three times in this football game that he's just barely wrapped up Eric Clay around the ankles. It's a gain of about a yard and a half. It's going to set up third, and right at one yard to go now for Clark County. Of course, the Cardinals definitely in four down territory now. Seven minutes, 52 seconds left in the third period. The Cardinals trail by eight, but they're on the march. Third and one, ball on the St. X, 22. The Zobler fans making some noise right below us. To go to Kenny Davis, and he's got enough for a first down as he takes it to the St. X 20-yard line. Graham, no question about it. They're keen on Eric Clay. They had him in motion, and I saw Adam Robinson and Steve Fernandez both trailing behind their defensive line. They give it to Kenny Davis. Excellent play calling by Don Danko. Buddy Joyce and Dinky McCurry. The Cardinals are driving this offensive line. It's running up this leadership part of the court. They're going. The Cardinals are headed to the end zone. Ball on the 20 of St. X. Hampton in motion to the near side. Give the corner right up the middle, and nothing there. It's very good to carry Eric Clay, number 22. Try to take it right up the middle of the field. Mike Schnellenberger in on the stop for St. X along with number 35, Adam Robinson. Schnellenberger's bonafide, 6 feet, 210. First team all state, he's showing live. And this is where the yardage is tough against this St. X defense. They've got an outstanding goal line defense inside the 20 yard line. They actually pick up two yards, so it's second down and eight. To give the play again, he goes off right tackle, he gets about inside the 15, oh, about the 13 yard line. Eric Clay trying to jump over the defenders. St. X definitely comes in low and tries to trip you up. Pick up of. Uh, let's see. About five yards on the play. That's going to make it third and three now for Clark County. The ball on the St. X 13 yard line. Jerome Embry, hands under center, calling out the play. To give to Clay again, he tries to find some room, and he gets it down very close to the 10-yard line. Clark County has to take it just over the 10 for a first down. That's going to be very close. We'll see where they spot it. In fact, yeah, I believe they're going to call for a measurement on that one. A give off right tackle to Eric Clay behind the blocking of Trent Travis and James Stoltz. Also, John Watts over on that side of the field. And now they're going to bring in the sticks for a measurement. First and 10. Yeah, it's first, first, and first and go. Clark County cannot get a first down. And we've got a delay, and I'm not sure why there's a flag down. And evidently, St. X lined up offside because that is offside or encroachment against the Tigers. Dead ball foul. So that's going to take it down just inside the five-yard line. So that's a break for Clark County because they had to score from about as far as you could on the field without getting a first down. It was just over the 10-yard line. But that takes it down just inside the five where it's first and goal now for GRC. 6-16 left in the third period. St. X 14, Clark County 6. Of course, if the Cardinals can score, I'm sure they would go for two points. Tim Hampton lined up in the wing. And there's another flag that goes down. And I believe that's going to go against Clark County. It is. It's offside against Clark County. So the break that the Cardinals just got from St. X, they give it right back to them. Offside against Clark County. So that takes it right back out to just over the 10-yard line. And that's a tough break because this team has an excellent goal line defense. It's a game to Eric Clay. He's going to score. Just as soon as I get the words out of my mouth, it's a give to Eric Clay. He goes off right tackle behind the blocking of Trent Travis. Also, John Watts into the far corner of the end zone. And with five minutes, 57 seconds left in the third quarter, that makes the score. St. X 14, Clark County 12. You're exactly right, Graham. Trent Travis and John Watts, they play on a wide open hole for Eric Clay. And nobody touched him. Nobody touched Eric Clay from nine and a half yards out. 
Cardinals right now trail by two points. Big play with 557 left in the third quarter. An excellent drive for the Cardinals as they go 73 yards ground on 11 plays with Joe Ryan Henry at the controls offensively. Tim Hampton, Eric Clay, and Kenny Davis running very hard. Clark is going for two. They set the ball on the near hash mark. Play in motion to the far side. Embry sprints out. He throws it into the end zone, and it's good to Tim Hampton. A nice pass from Jerome Embry to Tim Hampton, and that ties up this football game. Graham. Tim Hampton's kick taken by David Schweitzer on the 25-yard line. He bobbled it, picked it up, and then hit it to the near side of the field and finally was pushed out of bounds on the St. X 32-yard line. We have five minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Our score is all tied up, 14 all. This is St. X's first possession in the second half. Clark County, that was one of the finest marches that they've put together all season. It's an explosive team. Wagner hands off to Jerry Hobbs, and he's brought down right on the 35-yard oh, line Hatton by John Hatton. Pick up a three yards on the play. We'll set up second and seven. Graham, you're right. One of the finest drives of all, all season long, and it couldn't have come at a better time as they come out of the locker room trailing 14 to 6. They went 73 yards on a total of 11 plays. They generated four first downs with 5.57 left to go in the third quarter. Eric Clay from nine and a half yards out around right in. Emory to Hampton for two points. This thing's all tied up 14 all. Wagner, it's a third now, he throws it, and oh, almost intercepted by Stephon Bruton. The ball was intended for number 10, Brian Lynn, down on the GRC 40-yard line. It would have been a very tough interception that time, but Stephon deflected the pass, and we've got somebody shaking up for Clark County. Oh, that's Tim Hampton. That would be a major loss for GRC. Apparently right in the middle of the thing, and the offensive line banged him up pretty good as he was trying to rush Lee Wagner on that thing. Excellent pass defense that time by the Cardinals secondary, and as you called it, Stephon Bruton almost came up with the interception. Wagner rolls out the pass, gets nice protection, and it's caught by Montano on the 49er yard line of Clark County. Eric Clay was on the coverage. Eric had a shot at intercepting that football. He went for the ball and couldn't get it, and Montano caught it. I believe we're going to spot it on the 48 of Clark County, where it's first and 10 now, St. X. Miguel Montano's impressive. He's coming out of the football game. Graham is he tight rope the si tight rope the sidelines. A la Todd Kitchen of LSU. Very impressive reception. Eric Clay went for the interception. Nice try by Eric. First and 10 X. Wagner rolls out to the near side of the field. Now he's going to run with it. Find some daylight. Stephon Britton comes in to throw him down on the 40-yard line, but not before Lee Wagner picks up eight yards to make it second down and two. I'm very impressed with Lee Wagner. He's the second leading rusher for St. X coming into this game with 585 yards on 117 carries. That's an average of five yards a carry. He scored four TDs, but he's definitely, he's a junior. He's doing a fine job directing this offense for St. X. Second and two, ball on the Cardinal 40, and we've got flags on the play. Jerome Embry in playing defense now for Clark County. I don't know what the story is on Hampton. I don't know if the wind was knocked out of him or what. Got offside against Clark County. Tough break for the Cardinals. That's going to give St. X a first down. Greg Bowline, their tight end at 6'2", 190, is making all the difference in the, in the world when Lee Wagner rolls out as he's cutting our defensive ends down. To me, that's been the key uh, offensively for St. X, the play of their tight end, Greg Bowline at 6'2", 190, doing a good job blocking our defensive ends and giving Wagner room to run. Wagner on the keeper again, goes off left tackle, finds a hole, gets it down to the Clark County 25-yard line where Stephon Bruton came up to make the stock tackle along with Ryan Hudson. But Lee Wagner took the ball, he's the keeper all the way, went off left tackle and gets it down. It is enough for another St. X first down right on the GRC 25-yard line. So the Cardinals came out and scored here to start the third quarter, but the Tigers come right back. Running out of the split backfield. Lynn split wide to the near side. To give the hubs, he tries to go off left tackle. Not much there, pickup of about two yards. John Hatton was there to meet him first. 
And then Tom Stropster came in to make the stop. Pickup of two yards on the play will set up second down and eight now for St. X. 4.06 left in the third period. Our score is tied at 14, but the Tigers are moving the football. Tim Hampton is back into the game for Clark County. And that's good to see because he punts, he kicks, he plays defense, he plays offense, he returns kickoff. St. X again out of the split backfield. Lee Wagner calling out the play. It's a pitch to Hubs. He takes it to the far side of the field. Here comes Clay. And he hit him on the 21, but Hubs forward momentum took him down to about the 18-yard line. Pickup uh, five yards on the play. It's going to set up third down and three now for the Tigers. First time they've run the toss sweep. They went to Hubs. The fullback at 6 foot 188 showed good speed. Eric Clay, an outstanding job coming up from the right cornerback position to stop Hubs short of the of the sticks and set up a third and three situation. Big down for St. X offensively. Of course, equally as big defensively for the Cardinals. This is the big down here in the second, uh, third quarter, Graham. Wagner on the keeper. Takes it up the middle of the field. He's dropped on the 15. He might have enough. Dwayne Morton was in on the stop along with James Stoltz and Tim Hampton. He needs to get it right over the 15-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. The officials are going to take time out for a measurement, so even if they don't make it, I'm sure that the Tigers will go for it. All right, first down for St. X. We're going to call it on the 14-yard line of GRC. The Tigers are fired up. They send two wide receivers to the near side of the field. They're in the split backfield. Wagner again on the keeper, finds some daylight, gets it down inside the Clark County 10. Right now, Lee Wagner doing most of the damage against Clark County as he fakes some handoffs, but then just keeps it, and he picks up five yards to make it second and five now. The ball will call up the nine-yard line of Clark County. Lee Wagner, very impressive, both running and throwing the football. He carried the ball 11 times in the first half. He's carried it five times here in the second half, Graham. He's very quick. Reminds me of Marcus Covington from Madison Central, but I believe Wagner's a better quarterback. Oh, no question about it. Oh, we've got motion. I don't know who that's going to be on. St. X definitely moved before the snap. Clark County may have moved as well. I'm not sure. St. X players are pointing Clark County's way. And that is offside against Clark County, and that may be enough for another St. X first down. It's going to be very close. That's three offside penalties against Clark County in this third quarter alone. The ball just passed the five-yard line. Second down and less than one yard to go now for X. And in motion to the near side. It's a give to Hubs. He may go in. And he stopped right on the one-yard line by Tim Hampton and Eric Clay and pushed back. Kirby Varney also went on the stop. That's going to be enough for a first down, though, for St. X all the way down to the GRC one-yard line. So the Tigers have four tries to get it in from there. They're signaling for their crowd to get up and yell, Trippy Wick. St. X crowd very loud right now, Graham, as the ball is one yard away from the Cardinal end zone. And I believe this crowd, along with the teammates along the sidelines, are firing this St. Xavier offense up. Wagner hands under center to give the Hubs right up the middle. And he gets in. Touchdown, Jerry Hubs. With one minute, 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter, that makes the score St. X 20, Clark County 14 on a one-yard plunge by the fullback, Jerry Hubs. And now Mike Conklin will check in to attempt the extra point for St. X. Miguel Montana will do the holding. The Clark County opened the second half by putting together a nice march, but St. X answers with one of their own, aided by several offside penalties against GRC. The ball is down, the kick is up, certainly long enough, and it's good. So we have one minute, 40 seconds remaining in the third period. St. X 21, Clark County 14. Bailey gets the signal gets off a pretty decent kick. It's going to be taken by Hampton on the 10-yard line, brings it straight up the field, gets it up to the 20, the 25, finds a little daylight. Finally, he's brought down on the Clark County 34-yard line, a nice return of 24 yards by Tim Hampton. He brought it straight up the field, tried to break it to the far side, and with his speed, he might have been able to break that one, but... As it is, Clark County takes over, first and 10 on their own, 34. Jerome Embry, hands under center, calling out the play for the cards. 
It's the inside reverse to Hampton. Looking for a block. He takes it out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Gain of about seven yards on the play. The first handoff was to Eric Clay, who gave it to Hampton. And that's what Clark County does need to do. They're going to spot it on the 40 for a gain of six, but pick up nice yardage on first down. Clark County came out of the locker room, fired up, and tied this thing, tied this thing up. St. X was up to the task. They went 68 yards on 12 plays, Graham. St. X leads 21 to 14. Embry, it's a give to Clay. He takes it off right tackle. Finds some daylight. Eric Clay finally drug down on the St. X 45-yard line, but not until he picks up a Cardinal first down. A simple handoff off right tackle behind James Stoltz and Trent Travis. Eric Clay doing a much better job here in the second half, rushing the football for Clark County. Running very hard, and they're going to him, Graham, and he almost broke it. It was number 29, the free safety, Frank Campisano, 5'8", 170, that perhaps saved the touchdown for the Tigers. Cardinals on fire offensively. Give to play again. He goes off right tackle, gets it down inside the 40-yard line. Pickup of six yards on the play. They're going to spot it on the St. X 39. Nice gain by Eric Clay. We'll set up second down and four yards to go now with just 18 seconds remaining in the third period. Flashing run by Eric. Mike Schellenberger, 6'2", 10, brought Eric down, but not before he picked up six yards. The Cardinal offense is playing with very, very much confidence, Graham. Clay lined up on a wing. It's a double wing formation now. Clay goes in motion. Oh, we've got motion. Tim Hampton jumped that time, I believe, before the snap. And the end of the third quarter, the score, St. X 21, Clark County 14. We'll be back in 30 seconds right here on AM 1380 WHRS. Clark County had been on the last play of the third quarter. They had been signaled for illegal procedure, but the official ruling that the quarter had run out. Now it's second and nine. Clay in motion to the near side. It's a fake to Clay. Embry's trying to do something. Now he's going to run with it. He gets it up to the 40. I don't know. Jerome may have been looking for somebody to throw to that time. It was a fake to Clay, and then he took off on the option to the far side of the field. Finally, he tucked it under and headed straight up field. He gets it over the St. X 40-yard line. It was a pickup of about five yards on the play, and that's going to make it third down and three now for the Cardinals. I believe Jerome intended to throw the shovel pass that time, but he did the wise thing. Eric Clay was covered, Graham, and it was Brandon Meyer, the cornerback at 5'8", 190, that came up and stopped Jerome, but not after a nice scramble to set up a third and three situation. Big down for Clark County. To give to Eric Clay, and he's not going to find the thing. As he's going to lose a yard. I believe they're going to spot it on about the 40. He tried to go off right tackle that time, but St. X was standing there waiting on him. That's going to make it fourth and five, and this will be interesting to see what Clark County does. They may go ahead and punt in this situation. Nothing you can say about that play except the simple fact that St. X had that one smelled out, Graham. Brandon Meyer, the defensive end, 5'8", 190, wrapped Eric Clay up three yards deep in the Cardinal backfield. He simply had nowhere to run. Fourth and five, the Cardinals appear to be going for it, Graham. Double wing formation, Hampton in motion to the far side. Embry rolls out the pass. Now he's going to run with it. Can he get enough for a first down? He does. He's still on his feet to the 30. Finally brought down on the St. X 27-yard line, but not until he picks up a huge first down for Clark County. The Cardinals now moving from our left to right here in the fourth period. Excellent run on a big down, fourth and five situation. Jerome Embry up to the task. He picked up 13 yards, and it was Brandon Meyer who's made three successive tackles for St. X who stopped Jerome Embry, and he looked like he was going to break it, Graham. Jerome Embry giving us leadership, giving this ball club leadership, giving these 3,000 fans leadership at the controls offensively for the Cardinals. Embry, it's a give to Clay. He goes off right tackle, finds a little room, gets it down right to the 20-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of seven yards on the play and set up second down and three. Clark County trying to move. Behind the right side of the line, Trent Travis and James Stoltz are blocking over there along with the tight end. They've been alternating. John Watts has been there primarily. Nice seven-yard run by Eric, running very hard in the fifth consecutive tackle by Brandon Meyer, the cornerback at 5'8", 190. Second and three. Embry, hands under center to give to Hampton. He goes off left tackle, finds some daylight, gets it down inside the 15-yard line where he had his feet taken out from under him but not until he picks up another first down for Clark County. Beautiful run by Tim Hampton. The Cardinal offense right now is hitting on all cylinders, Graham. They're moving the football, very confident. The offensive line doing a nice job. 
They look like a symphony right now offensively, Graham. If they can get in the end zone and if the defense can respond, we've got us a football game that's going right down to the wire, just like it should, Graham, because this is a show. Embrace to give these, oh, we've got flags down. We have a flag on the play. Not sure what that is. In fact, that may have been dropped even. Paul County says it's against St. X, Angie. It is. It's offside or encroachment against the Tigers, so that's going to take the ball down to the St. X eight-yard line. St. X 138 yards rushing on 33 carries. Clark County has tracked the 200-yard mark with 202 carries, 202 yards on 29 carries. Time of possession almost even. 19 for St. X, 16 for the Clark County Cardinals. Hampton again goes off left tackle, cuts it up down, he goes in, touchdown! Tim Hampton from eight yards out. And with eight minutes, 58 seconds remaining in the game, that closes the gap to one point. St. X 21, Clark County 20. Nice run by Tim Hampton. David Schweitzer, the cornerback at 5'8", 158, had a shot at him, but Tim simply ran over him. Tim Hampton is 6'3", 200-plus pounds. He wanted to get the end zone, Graham, and that's where he got. He's going to try to tie it up right now. Jerome Embry in the hole. Tim Hampton with the biggest point after perhaps in his life, maybe the biggest in Clark County football history. St. X got in to deflect the first one he attempted, and then Clark County got two points the next time. The ball is down, the kick is up. And it's good. Kick is good. And with eight minutes, 58 seconds left in this football game, and our score tied at 21, we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Tim Hampton set to kick off now for GRC. Lynn deep to receive for St. X. It's not a good kick. It's going to be taken on the 25-yard line by David Schweitzer, and he's finally brought down on the... I believe his knee hit, Graham. I believe they're going to rule his knee hit on the... St. X 27 yard line. A quick recap on that scoring drive by the Cardinals. They took over on their own 34 yard line and went 66 yards on a total of 10 plays. They picked up five first downs with 8.58 left in this football game. Tim Hampton, an eight yard runoff left tackle. His extra point attempt was good. We're all tied up. 21 all with eight minutes and 45 seconds left in this football game. Ball on the St. X 27. It's a pitch to a new back in the game. That's number six, Joe Thomas. And he's pushed out of bounds right on about the 30-yard line. Well, Clark kind of got a little bit of a break on that kickoff. David Schweitzer took the kick, but evidently his knee was down when he fielded it because he took off running, but the official was there and signaled it down. Gain of three yards on the play. Sets up second down and seven. The ball just short of the St. X 30-yard line. Graham, the second half has been all offense. Neither team has stopped each other. Clark County needs to stop the St. Xavier Tigers and do it right now and get the football back. X running out of the eye. It's a give to Hubs. Right up the middle of the field. He picks up about two yards on the play out to the 32-yard line, and that's going to set up a big third down and five-yard situation. No question about it. Third and five. Lee Wagner's the focal point. Graham, he's probably going to roll out. Kim Hampton and Kenny Davis need to get pressure. They need to contain Lee Wagner. This is a huge down for St. X because Clark County's offense is on fire. They know they need to pick up this first down. Of course, Clark County doesn't want to let them do it. Big down. Wagner drops back to pass. Gets nice protection. He sets up and throws downfield. I believe it's intercepted by Purden. It is intercepted by Stephon Purden on the Let's see the St. X 47-yard line as he stepped right in front of Miguel Montano. Buenos dias, Miguel Montano, says Stefan Burton as he played it perfectly, Graham. Buenos dias, Miguel, Stefan Burton played it perfectly right in front of the excited Cardinal sidelines. Frank Capisano picked one off in the second quarter. Stefan Burton says it's my turn. Cardinals have the football. Excellent defensive play by Stefan Burton. Golf, right over the ball at center. Jerome Embry calling out the play. It's a give to Hampton. He goes off left tackle. He's to the 40. Still on his feet, looking for him. He's to the 30. He's going to go. Tim Hampton to the 15. 10 foot. Touchdown, Tim Hampton from 46 yards out. Boy, I've said it all year. It's a symbiotic relationship. The defense, the offense, they feed off of one another. And in the span of about 10 seconds, the volcanic offense kaboom in Louisville. Stephon Bruden picks one off on the first snap. Tim Hampton, 46 yards, breaking tackles, and he high-stepped it in from the five-yard line. What a play. What a team. Nothing can stop Cardinal football tonight in this second half. Graham, the offense is on fire. 
Hampton in to attempt the point after. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it's good! Seven minutes, 42 seconds left in a great football game. Clark County, 28, St. X, 21. Whoop. Tim Hampton's kick taken by Lean on the 15-yard line. He brings up the far side of the field, finds some daylight, gets it up over the 30, the 35. Finally pushed out of bounds on the St. X 42-yard line, but a nice return by Brian Lean that time for St. X to give the Tigers the ball in pretty decent field position. Clark County has just scored. Stephon Bruton intercepted a pass, and then Tim Hampton went 46 yards to put the Cardinals up 28-21. Seven minutes, 34 seconds left in a wild football game. But a nice return gives X the ball on the Tigers' 42-yard line. They line up in the I formation. Lee Wagner, it's a fake pitch to Daly. Now he takes off to the near side. Barney trying to close the gap. Eric Clay grabs his shirt, but not before Wagner runs out of bounds very close to midfield. It looks like the official, I believe he's going to spot it on about the 48-yard line. Nice fake on the pitch toss to Daly, and then Lee Wagner took off on a naked reverse to the near side of the field. The ball is placed down on the St. X 47-yard line. Gain of seven, second down and three. Twin sets to the far side. X moving from our right to left. Split backfield. Wagner to give right up the middle to Carl Daly, and it looks like he's got enough for a Tiger first down as he gets it down to the GRC. We'll see where they spot it. Looks like about the 46-yard line. Nice quick hitter by Draley. Picked up the first down on the bottom of the stack. James Stoltz and Tom Shropshire Graham. 7-19 left. This is a football game. This is the way it's supposed to be, Graham. They call it the show, and both of these teams, they're putting on a show. This thing is wonderful. Man in motion to the far side. Still in the eye. Wagner, it's a pitch back to Daly. He tries to go off around right in, and he finds some daylight. He gets about five yards as he dives down to about the Clark County. Where well, they're going to spot it on the 43. Pick up uh, four yards on the play. We'll make it second down and six. Toss sweep to Draley. Tim Hampton, who's had a dream football game, was about six, yard deep, six yards deep, and he had a shot at him, but he couldn't bring him down. Dwayne Morton made the stop after a four-yard gain. Six minutes, 42 seconds left. Charlie Allen stood wide to the near side of the field. Split backfield. Wagner, straight hand off to Daly, and not much there at all. Clark County thinks it may even be their football, but the official is not giving the signal. Ball is going to be spotted down right on the GRC 40-yard line. Make it to 41. Gain of two yards on the play. Sets up third down and four yards to go now for the Tigers. Two consecutive tackles by Dwayne Morton, the headhunter. Graham, I've just about lost my voice. This thing is so exciting. Dwayne Morton at six foot, 185, and a senior with a big hit. This is a big down, third and four. Davis and Hampton are going to come after Wagner. Montano in motion to the far side. Wagner sprints out the pass. He's got good protection. Now he throws it long downfield, and it's broken up. It was intended for Montano. Bruton was down there. He may have gotten a hand on that. That was excellent coverage. Uh, I believe that's Dwayne Morton was on the coverage along with Eric Clay. The ball was deflected. Bruton had a shot in it. If he came up, that would have been super. But as it is, it's incomplete, and that's going to set up fourth down and four now for St. X. And they're going to call time. Wagner sort of threw it up for grabs. I can't remember. I mean, I couldn't tell if it was Stephon Bruton or Dwayne Morton that knocked the football up in the air. They were both there. This is a huge down. Fourth and four with 5.48 left. They're in the eye formation. The twin sets to the far side of the field. I look for Wagner to pass. He rolls out to the far side. He's got protection. He's going to run for it. And he's down. And he may have enough for the first down. Coach Don Danko throws his hat down. I believe he's got enough. I mean, he was airborne at the 40. They're going to spot it down on the Clark County 35, and I believe that's enough for the first down. Great effort by Lee Wagner, the quarterback. They call it a game of inches, Graham. We're going to count inches right now as the officials have called a timeout. They're going to bring the chains down. Oh, awesome. Outstanding running by Lee Wagner, as you called it. He dove about four feet in the air, I think four yards in the air, rather and uh, got what appears to be a first down. Yes, they're signaling a first down, Graham, by about half the length of the football. Yeah, I thought he had that one. Well, actually, they had two footballs on the field, and I wasn't looking at the right one. 
with the one that they had down on the far hash mark. That was clearly a first down. So just like last week against Trinity, they picked up a big fourth down on a march in the closing minutes of the game. It's a give to Hubs. He finds a hole off left. Now it's Bailey off left tackle to get you down to the Clark County 25-yard line. And that may be enough for another St. X first down. Ryan Hudson's down. Now he's getting up off the field very slowly. But a straight give right off left tackle to Carl Daly. Oh, it's going to be about a yard short. Second down and one. Ball on the Clark County 26-yard line. Split backfield for the Tigers. Let's see, Wagner is the fake to Daly, and I believe it was Wagner on the keeper all the way, and he's got plenty for a first down. It's going to be down to about the 17 or 18-yard line now of GRC. We have four minutes, 58 seconds left in this game. Clark County's leading 28 to 21, but St. X has picked up another first down. The ball is just over the 23-yard line. Less than five minutes left in this football. Graham, how much would you give for a Coke right now? I'd give about $10. My throat's dry, but I'm not going anywhere. This is a show, 4.46 o'clock running. First and 10 from the Cardinal 23. St. X driving offensively, trying to tie this football game up. Montano in motion. It's a pitch back to Daly. He tries to sweep the far side, and he's met back there by John Watts to trip him up for a loss of about, oh, gosh. About three yards on the play. John Watts shot the gap. He's playing outside linebacker. Tripped him up and lost the three. Sets up third down and 13. Make it four. Lost the four. Second and 14 now for St. X. Toss sweep to the far side. Nobody laid a hat on John Watts, and it cost St. X a nice shoestring tackle by John. He stayed at home and dropped him for a four-yard loss to set up a second and 14. Clark County, three timeouts left. St. X has only one. That may prove to be big, Graham. The ball is on the Clark County 27. Wagner rolls out to the near side to pass. Throws it wide. Oh, he's wide open. That's Lane, but it's out of bounds. Oh, he was wide open. I don't know whose man that was. Blake and Clay were, were back there, but I mean to tell you, Brian Lind or Lane was wide open, but he caught the ball out of bounds. And Wagner, he had to turn, and he, he rolled to the near side, but he's right-handed. He turned, and he fired it down there, but it's incomplete. And that's going to set up third down now in 14, the ball on the Clark County 27. Mix up the defensive secondary for Clark County. It didn't matter, though, Graham, Sean Roach, and Tim Hampton were putting tremendous heat on Lee Wagner, and they leveled him. They laid him on the AstroTurf ram. Third and 14, Kenny Davis, Tim Hampton, the linebackers. They're coming after Lee Wagner. He's been their leader. He's going to have to do it right now, and he's doing it from the shotgun. Shotgun formation. A man moved that time, but no flag. Wagner is scrambling. Now he's... It's complete to Wayne, down on the 18. He's got it down to the seven yard line. I want to tell you, there was a man in motion that time for St. X. The official did not pick it up. And it's complete from Wagner to Brian Lind. He takes it all the way down to the Clark County eight yard line, first and 10, St. X with 340 left in this game. Nice big time play by the St. X Tigers, first time out of the shotgun. Tim Hampton that time recovered. Graham, he made the tackle and he saved the touchdown. First and goal from the eight with three minutes and 33 seconds left. Now we've got a timeout. St. X has had this football for a total of 11 plays, Graham. The biggest play in this drive, obviously, was when Lee Wagner on fourth and five dove to pick up the first down by half the length of the football. Wagner, it's a give to Daly right up the middle. He's met by Jerome Embry. He got it just over the Clark County five-yard line. They're going to spot it. We're going to call it the four, where it will be second down and goal to goal now for the Tigers. Four-yard line. Lynn checking in with the play for St. X. Montano coming out. Lynn now splits wide to the far side, running out of the split backfield. And there's a fly down. Well, somebody may have lined up offside again. I'm not sure. And evidently, it's Clark County. Costly mistake offside against Clark County. Second down and goal, St. X, the ball on the Clark County two-yard line. Split back field. Man in motion to the far side. Wagner, it's a give to Hubs right up the middle. He's going to be stopped on the one. Kirby Varney was in on the stop. Brian Maynard was there. John Watts was there. The whole interior of the Clark County defense. Now Hampton gets in. 
Dale Goff checking out for Clark County. The ball is on the one. It's third and goal. Of course, this is definitely four-down territory for St. X. It's just 2.23 left in the football game. They'd have to go for it if they don't make it here. The Cardinal defense digging in. Lee Wagner, hands under center, calling out the play. It's a give to Daly, and he's met right on the line of scrimmage. He's not going to get in. We're still going to call it the one-yard line. He's very close. The tackle was made by Jerome Embry. Graham in there at inside linebacking position. He came in very, very quickly, made a tremendous hit. St. X is going to burn their last timeout. So with timeout on the field, the ball on the one-yard line, call it the two-foot line. But the Tigers have the ball fourth down and goal on the GRC, about the one-foot line. The Tigers have just used their last timeout to talk over strategy. They're lined up in the wishbone formation. Lee Wagner calling out the play. It's a fake of a pitch. Wagner's going to keep it. He may get in. No, he doesn't. Wagner doesn't get in. He was met on the far sideline and pushed out of bounds. The Clark County defense is held. Can you pick? Oh, somebody's hurt for the Cardinals. It was Eric Clay, Graham, he's hurt, he's holding his shoulder, but it was Eric Clay that made the tackle. <laughs> it looks like we're ready to go. Jerome Embry looking it over. Bruton is now in the game for Clark County. And Clark County is clapping. I don't know if that's a, I believe that's a penalty against St. X. Offside against St. X, and that gives Clark County some breathing room. The state championship on the line. St. X does not elect to go straight. They do not give it to the fullback on the power situation, the belly dive up the gut. Lee Wagner rolls out. He's very quick. He's had a great game, but he got a deep drop on his rollout. He made a big loop. And Eric Clay, who we hope is all right, he closed and kept Lee Wagner out of the end zone, Graham. Embry on the quarterback sneak. Only one yard. Now, here's the situation. St. X does not have any timeouts left in this football game. The clock is moving. It's down to a minute, 38 seconds. I can assure you, I can't, I'm having trouble picking out. There's Marty Joyce. He's looking at the stopwatch. He's going to use every available second before Clark County snaps this, this next football. They're going to take 24 seconds before they snap the football. A lot of celebration along the sidelines. It's still a little tense here. They do have to run the clock down. 109 and ticking. Jerome Embry under center. Clay's back in the game. It's a give to Clay, and he's met in the backfield. Oh, oh there's a loss of about three yards on the play as he was met right on the three-yard line. Loss of three yards. There's 55 seconds left. That's going to make it third down now and about eight yards to go for Clark County. So if they don't make it here, I don't know what they do in that situation. Well, I'm not sure, Graham. I'm too nervous to make the calculations, but uh, I'm not sure where the... Uh, the game clock shows 35 seconds and ticking. I believe if they snap this and go down on one knee, they won't have to snap it a fourth time. I may be wrong, but I think this one's history, Graham. I don't know. It's a give to Hampton. He's in the end zone. Now he brings it out to the four-yard line. There's 22 seconds left. That may be it, Angie. That may be it. The Cardinals are celebrating. The fans are celebrating. There's 14 seconds left. St. X is out of timeout. Clark County may not have to run another play. The ball is on the four-yard line. It's fourth down and seven to go. Five, four, three, two, one. It's history. Listen to everybody. Make the presentation to St. Xavier, runners up for the 4A championship. The 4A champions, the George Roger Clark Cardinals. And so concludes championship football from Paramount State. A huge day in the bluegrass. The Cardinals fly to the top. The Bobcats catch a wave. The Colonels, I say the Colonels, rip the Raiders. For the Wildcats, there's no place like Dome. Hey, I know it's a lot, but we're mule-headed about bringing you the best. That's 27 Sports Spectrum, and it's next. Sports.
Spectrum, a comprehensive look at state, local, and national sports. Hosted by 27 Sports First, Dave Baker and Bob Goldman. Sports Spectrum is brought to you by Frank Shoup Chevy Buick Pontiac Olds Geo in Georgetown. And by your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealers, like no other dealers in the world. Usually, it's pretty cut and dry where we'll begin our get-together every week, but this Saturday was tougher than most. Still, though, you can't argue that Christmas came early for the folks in Winchester. They have a long and storied history of success on the hardwood, and now they've reached the pigskin pinnacle. Six times in school history, Louisville St. X had made it to the state 4A finals. Six times they had won. Clark County had never before been to the state championship. But this afternoon in Cardinal Stadium, the new kids on the block were out to bring a state title back to Central Kentucky. Yeah! A football team with only one offensive weapon can be stopped. A team with two weapons can be contained. But a team with three stars is virtually unbeatable. And the Cardinals of Clark County had yet to lose through 14 games, heading into their 4A title game with Louisville St. X. Clark's big play offense wasted little time in striking. On their second possession of the game, Tim Hampton broke free up the middle and raced 74 yards for the game's first touchdown. The extra point, however, was blocked, and Clark led it 6 to nothing. But a funny thing happened to the Cardinals in the second quarter. For the first time all season, they were the ones getting pushed around. When Carl Daly swept virtually untouched into the end zone from five yards out, the Tigers had the lead 7-6, to six, and they were far from finished. On Clark County's next possession, Jerome Embry's pass was picked off by Frank Camposano. His return to the Clark 28th set up a two-yard touchdown run by St. X quarterback Lee Wagner. The Cardinals of Clark County are in completely unfamiliar territory here at Cardinal Stadium. Not only are they playing in their first ever state championship game, but for the first time all season long, they trail at the half. It's St. X 14, Clark County 6. Hey, I'm just excited. We, we didn't quit. We were down and whipped a little bit at halftime, but uh, somewhere along the line, they found a little extra effort, momentum, and they came out and played well. Clark County came out in the second half determined to run the ball at St. X, and they did. Eric Clay with a 10-yard touchdown run. A two-point conversion pass tied the game at 14-all. Back came the Tigers. Jerry Hubbs one-yard touchdown plunge once again gave St. X the lead. It was 21 to 14 after three quarters. All season long, the big three had come through for Clark County. And while Clay and Embry were pretty much held in check, it was Tim Hampton that provided the fireworks. His eight-yard touchdown run tied the game at 21-all. The Cardinals got the ball right back as Stefan Bruton came up with an interception in St. X territory. And on the very next play, Hampton broke loose again. 45 yards for a touchdown and the lead. Hampton himself had scored 14 points in a span of 76 seconds. Well, it's tough to stop them for 48 minutes. See, you stop them, you know, we stop them time and time again, and then they, they make a big run on you. Uh, you know, I said, I'm very proud of our defense. I thought they did a great job. I think we, we stopped them a little bit more than everybody else, and, uh, but that's not what it's all about. You've got to stop them all, all night long. St. X had one last gasp left in them and they marched the ball to the Clark County one-yard line with less than two minutes to play. On fourth and goal, the Cardinal defense made the play of the game, keeping quarterback Wagner out of the end zone. Offense sells tickets and defense wins championships, and that's about what it is. Is this what these guys have worked for since day one? When hey, I say it is. They play like it anyway all year long, and uh, we're just happy for them, excited naturally. And I just a great feeling. How ironic. A team known for its offense wins the state title with a goal line stand. I love him, man. I love my whole team, my brothers. You really beat everybody. We're a team. <laughs> In the AAA championship game, two first-timers met for the state title. Thursday at 8, the Cats and Moorhead State in Louisville. And next Saturday at 8, it's Arizona State and Kentucky from Rupp Arena. Eastern Kentucky will go on the road and try to pick up a 1AA playoff win at Marshall. And Georgetown will try and do the same in the NAIA postseason party at home against Peru State. But for now, a salute to those who laid it on the line every Friday night. Those high school heroes, a special look put together by the man to my left. For Bob Goldman, I'm Dave Baker. See you next week.